الحمد للہ الحمد للہ وقفا و صلاۃ و سلام علیہ الزین استفا خصوصاً علی افضل و خاتم النبیین محمد الامین و علیہ و صاحب اجمعین اما بعد فقط قال اللہ تبارک و تعالی کما ورد فی صورت العراف اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وإلى مدین خاہم شعیبا قال یا قوم عبد اللہ ما لکم من الہ غیرہ قد جاتکم بینتم من ربکم فعوف القیل والمیزان ولا تبخص الناس اشیاءہم ولا, ولا تفسدو فی الارض بعد اصلاحها ذالکم خیر لکم ان کنتم مؤمنین صدق اللہ العظیم رب شاہ علی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل الحمۃم السانی یفقہ قولی اللہ ربنا الحمنا رشدنا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہ ارن الحق حق ورزقن اتباع و ارن الباطل باطلا ورزقن اجتناب اللہ ربنا انس وحشتنا فی قبورنا ورحمنا بالقرآن العظیم اللہ ورحمنا بالقرآن العظیم اللہ مجعله لنا اماما و نورا و ہدا و رحمہ اللہ مذکرنا منہما نسینا و علمنا منہما جہلنا ورزقنا تلاوته آنا اللیل و آنا النہار وجعله لنا حجتا یا رب العالمین آمین Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we had completed our study of 84 ayat of Surah Al-Araf last night. And today we are beginning with ayat number 85. But before I proceed further, let me share with you a few points about the pair relationship among the Bakki surahs of the Qur'an. As I told you in the very beginning, most of the surahs of the Qur'an are in the form of pairs. وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْنْ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ This has been a, a usual rule with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creating everything in pairs. Although it's a disputable issue whether Qur'an is also a creation or not, But this rule seems to be so categorical that it applies to the surahs of the Qur'an also. Surahs are in pairs. Now what are the main features of the relationship of pairs among the Makki surahs? Number one point, and that is easily explained if you keep before you two basic and fundamental terms of the Qur'an. At-Tazkir. بے اعلی اللہ التذکیر بے ایام اللہ ایڈمانشنگ پیپل ود ریفرنس ٹو دی بلیسنگز آف اللہ ہز کریٹو ایکٹیویٹی دی مینیفیسٹیشن آف ہز ایٹریبیوٹس آل دیز تھنگس یو نو اینڈ سیکنڈ از التذکیر بے ایام اللہ یو مے کال دیم جنرلی لیسنس فرام ہسٹری But ayyam illah, in Quranic terminology, it denotes the very big events which happened during the course of history when whole nations were exterminated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whole people of Nu, whole people of Hud, whole people of Saleh, both the big townships of Sodom and Amora, destroyed, annihilated, exterminated. ایام اللہ دے آر دی ویری بگ اینڈ مائٹی ڈیز آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سو یو ول فائنڈ ان ون سورا آف دیٹ پیئر دیٹ اٹ ول بی ڈیووٹیڈ مور ٹو تسکیر بے آلہ اللہ اللہ بلیسنگس اللہ کریشنس اللہ سائنس ان دس یونیورس ان دی ہیون ان دی ارتھ اینڈ سو آن اینڈ ان دی ادر سورا ات تسکیر بے ایام اللہ You will find this, you know, in Surah Al-Anam, we didn't have any mention of such incidents. 20 sections, 
آیات نو مینشن وٹ ہیپن ٹو پیپل آف نو اور ٹو ہود اور ٹو پیپل آف سالے اور ٹو دو سٹیز آف سدوم اینڈ گمورا ایٹسیٹرا ایٹسیٹرا اینڈ ہیئر ان سورت العراف یو فائنڈ مور دین ہاف آف دی سورا دیٹ یو نو دیٹ ریلیٹس دیز ایونٹس وی ہیو ریٹ فور لاسٹ نائٹ وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی پیپل آف نو وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی پیپل آف ہود وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی پیپل آف سالے وٹ ہیپن ٹو دی سٹیز آف سدوم اینڈ گمورا where Hazrat Lut alayhi salam was sent. And we shall be studying two more today. That is what happened to the people of Shaib, what happened to Firaun and you know his army and his chiefs. So these are the six incidents out of history which are repeated in the Quran unified again and again and again and again in many of the Makki surahs. Second point, if you look to the history of the prophets in the Quran, Again, you must keep in mind two basic terminologies of Quran, two basic terms. Number one, Qasasun Nabiyyin, the stories of prophets. These stories relate mostly to the personal virtues of the prophets. Not in that way that a messenger was sent and the nation rejected him and the nation was exterminated. Not in that way. Qasasun Nabiyyin. You will read, you know, in whole surah of Surah to Yusuf, 13 sections, a very detailed history of Hazrat Yusuf, but nowhere any mention that he claimed and he demanded, believe me, obey me, or you will be exterminated. Nothing will be thought. But his character, soundness of his character, that is being discussed. So this is Qasasun Nabi Yid. And the second, I told you, Ambao Nusul, which I have already explained. The messengers sent to people, nations, they rejected and they were exterminated. So, Qasasun Nabi Yeen is something else and Abbaw Rusul is something else. Now, if you come to Surah Al-Araf, as I told you in Surah Al-Anam, it's totally at tazkir be Allah and only a mention of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. But his personal character, his virtues, but nothing of that sort. Nothing, no mention of any Ambaullah. And as compared to that, we find in Surah Al-Araf, as I told you, more than half of the whole Surah that is occupied by these Ambaul Rusul. But in addition to this, we find in Araf, Surah Al-Araf especially, lessons from the history. In the beginning, we find the beginning of human race or mankind. and the end that will happen to it. In the very beginning, the story of Adam and Iblis, that was the beginning of the human history. In the end, what will happen to them? The humans in the hereafter. Ashab al-Jannah, Ashab al-Araf, Ashab al-Nar, their conversations. Wanada Ashab al-Nar, Ashab al-Jannah, Wanada Ashab al-Araf, and so on. So that was the beginning and this is the end. Beginning story of Iblis and Adam and what will happen in the hereafter. In between is the history, Qasatul Nabiyyin and Ambaw Rusul both in between them. And then we find, you know, that we have six Ambaw Rusul in this surah. But about this, you know, there is a very beautiful division. As I told you, the geographical background that Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, he is said to be the second Adam because the whole progeny of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was annihilated. And actually what now we find humanity on this globe is all progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam because actually the habitation of this planet Till that time was only limited to that area which we today call the Kurdistan. Part of it in Turkey, part of it in Iraq, part of it in uh, Iran. And you know this is the region. And from here three sons of Hazrat Inu alayhi salam and their progenies. One son Sam. The Semitic nations they are they belong to the progeny of Sam alayhi salatu wa salam. They went down from that to the Arabian Peninsula. Iraq and then the Arabian Peninsula. The progeny of Hazrat 
یافس علیہ السلام دے کراس اوور دی سینٹرل ماؤنٹین آف سینٹرل ماؤنٹینس رینج آف ایشیا اینڈ آفٹر کراسنگ دی رینج ایسٹ ورلڈ اینڈ ویسٹ ورلڈ ٹوڈ چائنا منگولیا اینڈ دین ٹو یوروپ یو نو رشیا اینڈ یوروپ دے آر دی پروجنی آف حضرت یافس ان بٹوین واز دی پروجنی آف حضرت سام حضرت ہام ایسٹ ورڈس ایران انڈو پاکستان ویسٹ ورڈس ایجپٹ اینڈ یو نو دی دیز کنٹریز سو دیٹ از دی ڈسٹریبیوشن آف دی پروجنی آف نو علیہ سلاۃ وسلام نا قرآن مجید از گونگ اس دی ہسٹری آف اونلی دی پروجنی آف سام حضرت ابراہیم واز آلسو فرام امنگ دی پروجنی آف سام حضرت ہود آلسو قوم عاد قوم صالح آل دیز ور دی سیمیٹک ریسز دی سیمیٹک ٹرائبس یو نو وچ ور انہیبٹنگ عراق اور دی عربین پیننسولا اینڈ امنگ دیز وی فائنڈ سکس آر مینشن تھری وی می کال دیم پری ابراہمک ایریا نا دس از اینڈ دا ریسپیکٹ یو مسٹ کیپ دی ٹائم اینڈ اسپیس کمپلیکس وچ از ان دی بیک گراؤنڈ وین وی آر ریڈنگ دی نیوز آف دی messengers of Allah and the history of messengers of Allah, you must have it in the background, the time and space, you know, geographical background, historical background, what was the time framework. So actually human history as we have been able to know up till now doesn't go beyond 5,000 years. And nearly that is the time when Hazrat Ibrahim wasalam, appeared in the Chaldean Empire, which was, this is Iraq of today. the Ur city, which was the headquarter of that empire, Hazrat Ibrahim was born there. Now before Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Hazrat Hud alayhi salam, Hazrat Saleh alayhi salam, these three are pre-Abrahamic era. And I count Hazrat Luth also, although he is a contemporary of Hazrat Ibrahim, he was a nephew, nephew of Hazrat Ibrahim, but because there was one generation gap, Ibrahim was the uncle, Luth was the nephew. So we can say that Ibrahim and Shuaib and Moses, Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, they are post-Abrahamic era, era of human history. That is why we, in, I think, as far as I have uh, studied, I have not studied by the Old Testament thoroughly, but we don't find any, uh, any mention of Hazrat Hud and Hazrat Saleh in Bible. Only the prophets who came to the progeny of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, And before Ibrahim, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, because he belonged to a progeny of Hazrat, Ibra- Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. But Quran is giving us, you know, three nations before Ibrahim. Three nations, as I told you, may be said to be post-Abrahamic. Now, what's the difference, basic difference? Whenever you read in about, in Quran, the reference about the people of Nuh, people of Fud, people of Saleh, only one thing is mentioned, and that was shirk. Nothing else. What does it mean? That the human culture and so- social order had not developed up till to a level where other perversions, you know, could be found. Only the Ummul Khabais, the, the mother of all the misguidance, and that's a shirk. So you'll find always Hazrat Inu alayhi salam calling his people, La Tushriku Billah. Hazrat Ehud, La Tushriku Billah. Hazrat Saleh, La Tushriku Billah. So there was only one thing and that was shirk. But in post-Abrahamic era, we find number one, Hazrat Ehud, social perversion, sexual perversion, which cuts at the roots of human society, social order. Approaching men lustfully and to have their sexual desire gratified with men. Sodomy, they call it sodomy. Today you have a better word, more respectable, homosexuality. You know, because they have changed the word so that it shouldn't, shouldn't appear so bad. Sodomy, and lo- note here please, sodomy is a better word than what we use in Urdu or Arabic, lavatat. Lavatat, you know, it denotes deno- deno- to the name of a prophet of Allah, Lut. And prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his name shouldn't be degraded by using his word in this term lavatat no sodomy that that relates to sodom the city where hazrat luth alayhi salatu wasalam used to live sodom so sodomy is a better word 
never use lavatat anyhow so this was the perversion in the sexual behavior of man and you will find about the people to whom hazrat shuaib alaihi salam was sent their financial malpractices started cheating people not marrying the full when you are selling something by marrying not giving full when you are weighing out weighing it out and so on these were now the economic malpractices and number 3 in the case of hazrat musa alaihi salam political suppression and oppression of a nation by another nation the bani israil were oppressed by the people of pharaoh so these are the three things the politico socio economic system of of man either you know the social order is disrupted and this is disrupted when the balance between man and woman and the relationship between man and woman is disturbed or financial or economic crisis which comes out from you know this this economic disorders and third is political oppression and discrimination and so on so these are a few and we shall find here you know that the mention of people of nuh in one section one ruku people of hud in one se- section in the same way all these five they have been allocated only one section each in this surah but about musa alaihi salatu wassalam full 10 sections very detailed mention why actually this was the preamble because as i told you these two surahs suratul anam and suratul araf they were revealed just before hijra now muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions were to move to medina and there was to come the direct contact with the jews so it is actually a preface to of that direct you know address to the jews which we find in surah al-baqarah and incidentally there are also 10 sections of surah al-baqarah and in the same way you will find full 10 sections of surah al-araf which they are de- dedicated to the history of moses alayhi salatu wassalam and his people the bani israil